If there's ever been a franchise that has changed dramatically over its run, no series is as varied as Final Fantasy. It came during a time where Squaresoft was about to go out of business, hence the name Final Fantasy. But now it's grown into a massive series with 15 main series games, a new one on the horizon, and two characters in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. And one thing that Final Fantasy is known for is its villains. That's just dreadful. And that's who we're looking at today. Hey guys! I'm Brad with 1UP Binge, and this is Final Fantasy Villains, Evil to Most Evil. And before we get started, some rules. We're limiting this list to only main number titles and their sequels, excluding Final Fantasy XI and XIV, because these games, being MMOs, could honestly have their own list. And we're limiting each game to only two villains. We'll be starting with the best of the worst, so to speak and working our way down to the most vile. The best of the worst is Golbez from Final Fantasy IV. Golbez is a son of an alien from the moon and a human, and the older brother of Cecil, the main character of Final Fantasy IV. Golbez is half Lenarian, and his father introduced magic to the world. Golbez grew up unable to master his magic, even failing to learn how to use cure. After his father's death, he grew distant, and he was convinced that his infant brother was the reason he couldn't heal his father. In the following years, he has one of his minions assassinate the King of Baron and impersonate him, goes back on his deal to give back Rosa when a job is completed, and summons the Tower of Babel, a giant who tries to destroy humanity. The reason he ranks highest on our list is that he was not in control of his actions. He's the only villain on this list that is not only manipulated by a higher force, but technically taken control of by the Lunarian Zemus. He switches sides to help the heroes once his control is broken, even giving Cecil the crystal needed to defeat Zemus. After his redemption, he protects the Lunarians and takes a critical hit that was meant for Cecil. His redemption places him in our highest spot on the list. Arrogance undermines your might. Following Golbez is Final Fantasy X's Sin or Yevon. Sin is a gigantic whale-like monstrosity that was created during the Machina War. Sin was created by Yevon to protect and summon Dream Xanarkin and destroy any civilization that grows too big or too reliant on technology. However, after creating Sin, Yevon became indistinguishable from Sin, and the beast became reliant on instinct rather than thinking. Sin indiscriminately attacked and destroyed any Machina civilization, to the point that Machina fell out of style. Sin was defeated over and over again, and each time the summoner who destroyed it would become the newest version of Sin. Sin is eternal. Worshippers of Yevon saw it as a punishment for people's sins. However, because the beast only works on instinct, we cannot in good conscience work any lower. Because while it made its own decisions, it didn't consciously do so. The Swordmaster Gilgamesh from Final Fantasy V is next. Gilgamesh is X-Death's right-hand man and a high royal guard in his army. Gilgamesh fights the party on multiple occasions, but every action he commits is under the orders of X-Death. Eventually, he's thrown into the void by X-Death and only wishes to escape, going as far as to sacrifice himself for Bart's and the party against Necro-Death. Gilgamesh was only following orders, and even then, didn't commit any atrocious crimes. So while we can't rank him any higher, he doesn't fall any lower. Slicing into the next spot is Judge Gabranth from Final Fantasy XII. Gabranth is the twin brother of General Bosch, and a Judge Magister in the Arcadian military. You have grown very thin, Bosch. Throughout Final Fantasy XII, he was under the thumb of Vane Solidor and was a slave to his orders. That doesn't cancel out the evil he's done. He disguised himself as Bosch and assassinated a king, framing his brother for regicide, specifically to stop peace talks between the two kingdoms, and killed Vaughn's older brother Rex. He's not all bad. In the manga adaption, he requests Vane to go easy on Vaughn after he tries to hit the console since he was not a member of the Resistance, and agreed to become the guardian of the young Prince Larza, so he did not become like Vane. In the end, he gets redeemed. He fights Vane alongside Vaughn and the rest, and he's killed protecting his brother and Larza from the rampaging console. Judgment waits for no man. Next is Rufus Shinra from Final Fantasy VII. Rufus is a son of the late President Shinra and was originally a high-ranking official in the company. Before becoming the president, he was the main financer of the eco-terrorist group Avalanche. But despite financing this group, he explicitly states that he doesn't care about the environment. 
When he becomes president, he wants to rule through fear, going as far as ordering the execution of Tifa and Barrett. However, he cares about his subordinates, wanting to blow up the meteor barreling towards the Earth and renouncing his past cruelty during Advent Children. It's our responsibility to set things right. He offers to work alongside Cloud against the remnants of Sephiroth and attempts to destroy the remains of Genova. He ranks this high because his redemption arc is one of the most fleshed out, and his worst actions don't rank nearly as high as some of the others. Garland, from the very first Final Fantasy, is next. Garland was once the best knight in the kingdom of Cornelia and gained respect through his power and skill. However, this power corrupts him, causing him to kidnap Princess Sarah and fleeing to the Chaos Shrine, demanding control of Cornelia in exchange for the princess. He then created an infinite time loop, allowing him to live forever after absorbing the powers of the four fiends to become the old god Chaos. After he was defeated, he's hinted at being reformed in the main timeline. His actions are not nearly as terrible as some, but he did all of them of his own free will. Let us not stop here. There is yet more blood to shed. Next is Final Fantasy III's Zand. Zand is a student of the great Magus Noah, who gave him the gift of mortality, which drove Zand mad with the thought of dying so he wouldn't die. He tried to disrupt the balance of light and dark to freeze all of time, allowing him to live forever. He managed to absorb the powers of the earth and water crystals, which brought a tide of darkness and a flying continent that he tries to destroy later. Zan was subtly manipulated by Cloud of Darkness, but all of his actions are still his own, just steered by her. Moving from someone scared to die to someone who was too angry to pass on. Next is Xu Yin from Final Fantasy X-2. Xu Yin was the lover of a songstress and summoner named Lin over a thousand years ago during the Machina Wars. He wanted to end the war between Xanarkin and Bavel by activating a machine called the Vegna Gun, but this caused his death. His death filled him with such rage and bitterness that he was unable to pass on to the far plane or be corrupted into a fiend. For a thousand years, his shadow laid in wait until a company of recruits for a local army entered his cave. He drove most of the group to slay each other and then hitched a ride on one of the survivors. Using the possessed body, he tries to find and utilize the Vegna gun again to destroy Spira and stop human wars. He's defeated by Yuna and company, which causes the spirit of Lin to soothe Xu Yin's spirit, and the two ascend to the far plane. A thousand years and this moment is all we get? All of his actions were done out of anger for his death, but his redemption, while small, is enough to stop him from falling any further. You are not Lin! Jumping back to Final Fantasy III is Cloud of Darkness. Cloud of Darkness is considered the main villain of Final Fantasy III, but honestly doesn't appear for most of the game. She is behind Zan's schemes and shares the blame for the destruction of the crystals and the tide of darkness that spills over the world. She attempts to pull the floating continent down onto the world to cause mass destruction and defeats the Warriors of Light at first before slaying her. She ranks this low because she not only defeated the heroes, but almost wiped out continents. Our conquest is part of the natural order. Final Fantasy IV Zemus is next. Zemus was a Lunarian who vied for world domination, only to be forced to sleep and be sealed within the moon. Little did the Lunarians know, his psychic powers were so great that he could speak to other Lunarians while they were asleep. He utilized this ability to manipulate and take control of Golbez and used him for his plans of world domination. He manipulates Golbez to summon the Tower of Babel to start his destruction of humanity. He's eventually awakened and, after being defeated, creates Zeromus, a monster created from his hatred. But this is also defeated. He ranks below Cloud of Darkness because he didn't just manipulate someone, but took full control of them. Up next is the powerful sorceress, Ultimasia, from Final Fantasy VIII. Ultimasia is a sorceress from the future and is implied to be the sole ruler of the world in her era. Her goal is to absorb all of time and existence to become a goddess. To accomplish this, she goes back in time and takes over the body of a sorceress named Edia and turns one of the orphans and her orphanage into her personal knight. She attempts to usurp her power from all over the world 
and does so by killing the president and declaring herself ruler. She also mind controls an entire population through the usage of a reverence spell and soon becomes a dictator. However, she can't rank lower because she doesn't commit very many atrocious acts outside of the two just listed, meaning she lands here on the list. Our conquest has been foretold. Our other Final Fantasy XII representative is Vane Solidor. Vane is the son of Lord Gromis and the Imperial Consul to Rabanaster. Vane has been vying for the throne since he was young, even killing his two elder brothers under his father's orders. As time goes on, he teams up with Banal and Dr. Sid to, quote, put the reins of history back in the hands of man. The reins of history back in the hands of man. He became a leader of the Imperial armies, masterminding the invasions of Dalmasca and Narbradia, so he could obtain the Dusk and Midlight Shards. He drew up the plans to frame Bosch and ordered the execution of Vaughn for attempting to strike him. Going mad with power, he assumed to kill his father and becomes a new emperor and dynast king, a ruthless warlord who arrests his generals and executes them for high treason. He has Dr. Sid spill mist all over Ivalice, allowing his ship the Bahamut to fly around Ivalice and allow him to destroy all of the resistance. Vaughn, Gabronth, and the party slay him after he transforms into a massive mechanical dragon and tries to kill them all. He dies and takes Vanal with him. Unlike other villains, he's one of the first on this list who consciously does things to further his own strength, going mad with power. From one government leader to the next is Barthandalus from Final Fantasy XIII. Barthandalus, also known as Galant Dysley, is a Falci who helped devise a plan to open Etro's gate through the use of a mass human sacrifice. He created Cocoon and led the people of Grand Pulse while instilling a fear of outlanders. Cocoon is a factory. He took the helm of Sanctum's government and started leading the people of Grand Pulse from this high point of power. He also uses fear of the Lassie to lead his people, manipulating them into fearing Sarah and Anima. He covers up Psycom, exterminating the town of Bottom on his order. However, in hopes they would complete his goal, he led Lightning and her party through obstacles, even faking an execution of Zaz and Vanille to lead them where he needed them. His goal is awakening a being called the Maker by crashing Cocoon into Grand Pulse and causing enough death to open Etro's gate. He opens a gate to Orphan, who would complete his plans, but dies before he can make sure his plan was complete. His goals are some of the worst in the series, and he has the most direct deaths on his hands. But not to be outdone is Orphan from Final Fantasy XIII. Orphan is another Falci, much like Barthandalus. They also want to bring about the Maker, through the death of countless humans on Cocoon and in the countryside of Grand Pulse. Orphan wants Vanille and Fang to form Ragnarok to destroy them and Cocoon. When the two say no, they torture Vanille, and after Fang fails to do it by herself, not only tortures her, but heals her wounds just to continue torturing her. It is eventually destroyed and Fang and Vanille form a crystalline cocoon to hold up the giant floating city. They fall below Barthandalus because they not only torture party members, but turn them into mindless shambling monsters named Seath and come close to completing their plan. The Emperor, the main villain of Final Fantasy II, comes next on our list. He was the Emperor of Palamecia and wanted to rule the world by summoning creatures from hell. When his rule is questioned, he takes on entire cities, with tactics as low as poisoning all the city's water supply for their wyverns. It turns out he made a pact with Satan to gain his strength, his power able to crush entire cities with a single twister. He was not happy with his powers, so he went back to hell to destroy Satan and gained a new demonic form, intending to destroy the world with his new powers. However, he is defeated and tries to trick the Warriors of Light into forgiving him with a new angelic form, but Furion and the gang see through it and kill him once and for all. He ranks this low because he's not only a massive trickster, but destroys Satan to gain a massive strength boost. Gaze upon me and glimpse hell's true fury. The powerful destructive mage, X-Death from Final Fantasy V is next. X-Death is a living tree from the great forest of Moor and a powerful wizard who has laid siege to countless kingdoms. He shatters the world's crystals one by one in an attempt to take control of the world. 
he's powerful enough to sink Guido's island, and sends Gilgamesh to the void for his incompetence. He tortures the Warriors of Light with the Second World's crystals, and merges the worlds, which is a cataclysmic event. X-Death is the most destructive force so far in this list, and his kill count contains plenty of bodies. He also ranks as slow, thanks to his willingness to slay his minions when they annoy him. I will have the last laugh. A timeless and grim protector, Caius Ballad from Final Fantasy XIII-2 lands next on our list. Caius was a member of the Farseers, the oldest tribe that lives on Grand Pulse, who was driven mad thanks to becoming immortal. Caius is a guardian of a seer named Yule, who lost part of her life every time she saw into the future. Yule would be reborn after every death, and Caius protected each new Yule as they came. However, Caius would soon grow tired of this endless cycle, where Yule was born to die young, finding it cruel. How many times must I see this? So he raised Noel Christ to be the next guardian and left Yule's side, aiming to slay the goddess Etro in Valhalla, which puts him at odds with Etro's knight, Lightning. His goal was to stop the constant cycle he was stuck in, and he said that he would do anything necessary to complete this goal, even destroying reality. However, his efforts led to him becoming a different flavor of a mortal when he fused with the chaos that flooded Grand Pulse. He succeeds in ending time alongside Yule, but grows into a husk of his former self, settling for being a shepherd for the passed on souls of the living. He ranks here because he succeeded in his goal, but his turnaround stops him from falling any further, although he caused thousands of deaths. The goddess is dead. Skipping into the next spot is Kefka Palazzo from Final Fantasy VI. Kefka was the first in a line of experimental Magitek knights. He was experimented on so much, his mind was damaged. He became a maniac, murdering anyone, including women and children. Being a heavy magic user, he could manipulate others, like mind-controlling Terra to burn 50 Imperial soldiers alive. He burned down a kingdom when the king lied to him, poisoned the city's water supply and besieged the kingdom for a frozen esper. He tortured weakened espers and slew ones that tried to fight him. He even became a godlike creature that killed countless animals and plants and destroyed hundreds of towns for not worshiping him. Kefka is dancing mad and a deity with a heavy body count, but even then, he still doesn't reach the bottom three. It's a beautiful day for a massacre! Next on our list is Bunavelza from Final Fantasy XIII, Lightning Returns. Bunavelza is the son of another deity named Wen, who he killed to take control of the living world of Grand Pulse. He also created the Falci Etro in hopes that she would open up Etro's gate to the afterlife so he could destroy Mwen for real. He went into crystal stasis for many years, and when he woke up, wished to destroy the combined reality that was Nova Chrysalia. He started the plan by drawing hope to the abandoned city of Cocoon and spent 169 years molding him into the perfect host for his spirit. His goal was to create a new world to stop the chaos that was infecting it. While it's noble sounding, it causes death and destruction. He tries to get lightning to slay the dead souls so the living can forget about them. He also wants Vanil to cast Soul Song, which would cease her own life to destroy all of the spirits left in the realm. He discards Hope's body when he doesn't have any use for it as a vessel, but after using his body, he gained emotions, which caused him to try and kill Lightning and led to his own downfall. His placement comes mostly from the fact that he wanted to erase all the spirits of the dead and didn't care how many bodies it took to complete that. But even with all that, he's still only number four on our list. Third place belongs to Final Fantasy IX's Kuja. Kuja is a genome created by the ruler of the dead world Terra and sent to Gaia to reap souls from the inhabitants. Unlike the other two genomes created by Garland, he didn't have a childhood and was not capable of gaining emotions, so he had no remorse in his actions. Due to his lack of emotions, he was deemed incapable of being Garland's angel of death. In an attempt to have no competition, he abandoned the second genome, Zidane, on the planet Gaia as a baby. He was then banished to Gaia and decided to become a warmonger by creating the Black Mages. He was also behind the destruction of Maiden Sari and the conquering of Burmesia. 
he enslaves the dragon Bahamut and tries to slay Garnet with her own summon, and tries to usurp the Eidolons out of the young summoner Aiko. He then kills the weakened Garland and becomes the ruler of Terra, but upon realizing that he's only a pawn in the larger game, he tries to combine the two worlds to cause mass destruction. He even destroys Terra to conquer Gaia. He's eventually slain and congratulates Adon for his victory, and is happy that he survived their encounter. Kuja stands here because he decimates entire planets to further his plans, and is willing to kill anyone. What tortured screams shall grace our ears? Stealing the Silver Medal of Evil is the latest villain on this list, Final Fantasy XV's Arden Azunia. Arden has been around for thousands of years. Arden was set to be the first Lucian king, alongside his brother, Somnus. He could cure an illness by absorbing their sickness into himself, while his brother burned the same sick people to stop the spread of the illness. However, when he was set to be king, he touched a crystal that absorbed his soul and rendered him immortal. Since he was immortal, he was locked up for 2,000 years where the passing of time was irrelevant to him. After being freed, he found that he can turn people into demons when reading their memories. He put this to work, demonifying the astral god of Freed so that he could find out the truth finding that he was destined to be king instead of his brother. Upon learning this, he tries to start a war against Eleusis, intending to inflict divine intervention on the false kings of a fraudulent kingdom. He then learned of his true purpose, to die to the true king as a sacrificial lamb. Learning of his fate, he leads Noctis to fight him and kill him before Noctis does it first. He helps fell the astral Shiva, kills Noctis' bride Luna Freya, and kills an oracle which plunged Eos into chaos. He kills Ravis while disguised as Noctis, destroys the city of Gralia with demons and diamond weapons, and creates the Magitek army. He even lets the deadly disease he tried preventing spread across the world again. But his long life is eventually ended by the true King Noctis. But he's still not the worst villain on this list, for a few reasons. Oh, do go easy on me. Grabbing the gold medal of evil is the most recognizable villain in this series. It's Sephiroth from Final Fantasy VII. This one-winged angel is the son of Professor Hojo and Lucretia Crescent, who has cells from Genova inside him. He's one of the earliest super soldiers for the soldier program, and was instrumental in ensuring Shinra's dominance during the Wutai War. Sephiroth was hailed as a war hero, and used as a propaganda machine by Shinra because of his popularity. However, he felt that he needed to have a reason to fight, which led to him finding out about the Genova Project, ultimately driving him crazy. He believed he was the last remaining Cetra and had a grudge to repay against the human race. He burns Nibelheim to the ground, assassinates President Shinra, and kills Aerith, who was the true last remaining Cetra. He wants to bring down a giant meteor to the Earth and destroy all of humanity, and then merge with the life stream to become a god. Even after he died, he didn't stop, inflicting the planet with a disease named Geostigma, and caused his three clones to form him once again. He is leagues ahead of the other villains. While his body count might not be as high as the others, all the pain he's caused has been for a grudge that wasn't even his to act upon. Is this the pain you felt before, Cloud? All right, guys, that's the list. Who do you think is the most evil villain in the Final Fantasy series? Let us know in the comments section below. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. And if you need a one-up, make sure to binge our Good to Evil playlist, where we break down the morality of the characters in your favorite games. Thanks for watching.